Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at some uh, 7950X uh, performance scaling versus the power limit. So basically what I've done is I took my 7950X, I enabled XMP because I don't have an Expo memory kit, and I am benchmarking Linpack here, and Linpack is very memory sensitive. It would not run well if we ran it with JDEC. Um, so yeah, I enabled XMP. And then I just set the CPU's power limit to 50 watts all the way up to 275 watts in 25 watt increments, and I measured the performance at each of those power limits. Um, and the result of that is this graph and also all of this data right here. Um, actually, just just like th there's the actual data. A lot of the, the other stuff is just like data processing. Um, so anyway, uh, the workloads that I ran are Linpack, Cinebench R23, Cinebench R23 with six threads enabled. This was supposed to be like to, to see when like gaming performance would be affected because games don't really pull that much power. Geekbench 3 single threaded and Geekbench 3 multi threaded. I mean, I didn't really plan to test anything single threaded, but Geekbench 3 single threaded just kind of runs when you run Geekbench 3. So I included it because I had the data, so may as well. Um, anyway, uh, Let's talk about how the graph works. So these percentages might look a bit weird because it's like 207%. So the way this works is this is a relative performance graph. So all of these points are relative to the performance at 50 watts. So if we look at like this point over here where we have 200% uh, performance in Linpack, what this means is that Linpack is running twice as fast at 175 watts as it would be at 50 watts. So if we look at the actual raw data, that's 380 gigaflops per second at 50 watts versus 761.9 uh, gigaflops per second at 175 watts, a doubling in performance for a three and a half times increase in power limit. Um, so that's how the graph works. Um, yeah, and, you know, Linpack is the heaviest of the multi-threaded workloads that I ran here. If I could run a Prime95 small FFTs benchmark, I would. That would probably, uh, that that would also be kind of interesting. That would probably manage to scale to even higher power numbers than, than Linpack did. But, uh, yeah, if if you look at the, the scaling, like, basically everything stops scaling at around 200 watts. Um Right, so if we, like, and you can really see that, like, it's kind of hard to see it in the graph. I mean, you can see that it's sort of leveling off into a straight line, but uh, it's not as clear, in my opinion, as just looking at the percent improvement to the previous step. So that's what this is over here, like th this, right? Oops. Um, so if we go from 50 watts to 75 watts, right, we increase our power consumption by 25 watts, and we get a 44% increase in performance in Linpack. Uh, if we go from 75 watts to 100 watts, we see a 16% performance improvement. That's still a 25 watt power limit increase, but only 16 or, well, 17% more performance. And then we go 25 watts again, and we only get a 9% performance increase. But, you know, that's still pretty close to double digits. Uh, then we increase the power limit by 25 watts again, and we now only get a 5% increase in, in performance. Okay. Uh, then from 150 to 175, we get a 4% increase in, like, 4% increase, which is, uh, kind of pathetic. Um, at 200 watts, it's just another 3% on top of the previous four, so that's not great whatsoever. And at 225 watts, and I think this, this was, a just like that run was a bit slow, but even then, it wasn't going to be much more than, like, 1%, 1 2%, you know, like, yeah. Um, whereas like Cinebench going from 175 watts to 200 watts sees a 1.6% increase in performance, which that's basically margin of error on Cinebench, uh, <laughs> annoyingly enough. Uh, and, you know, at Geekbench, we see basic, actually Geekbench is even worse because Geekbench is a lower power, like less intensive multi-threaded workload. And so that only sees a 0.8% increase in performance going from 175 watts to 200 watts. The CPU really doesn't scale, like, to 200 or even, like, it really doesn't scale past 200 watts. It doesn't really scale even up to 200 watts. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit confused as to why these chips are shipping with a 230 watt power limit, though maybe there are some 7950Xs out there that are incredibly leaky and just need a ton of power to compensate. So, um, that is certainly a possibility, but yeah, like... I guess if you're if you're an efficiency-oriented individual, 
Um, you wouldn't really be losing out on much by turning your 7950X down to 150 or 175 watts. Actually, you basically wouldn't be losing anything at all. Um, as there's as there's very little difference, right? Like if I go for the the Linpack results um, from 175 watts to the highest point, which is 209% over here. So 209.951 divided by 200.18. Uh, that's a uh, 4.6% increase in performance. Kind of, you know, like, I, I guess I, I, it depends on what you're doing, but I would say that that is not noticeable. Um, I mean, the, the thing is, like, when, when we're talking, like, Linpack performance, we're sort of talking, like, rendering, video encoding performance, and it's like... I guess it depends how much rendering and how much video encoding you're doing. Because if you're doing, like, long encoding job, like, you know, lots of it, and you're spending hours and hours and hours and hours and, and like, days of rendering, then I guess a 4.6% reduction in, or, like, a 4.6% speed up in, in rendering performance might be worth the extra, uh, you know, 50, 75 watt, and the thing is, it's worth noting that the CPU doesn't actually pull full 200. Well, I wasn't actually checking the power consumption. So it might be actually hitting 250 watts at this point, but uh, um, it's really hard to cool at that point. So it's not going to be quite like... It's not going to be just a straight-up jump from 175 to, to 250. It certainly doesn't pull 275. It's uncoolable at that point entirely, so... That's, th this right here, like, yeah, that's, I mean, the the, the slight performance reduction is just run-to-run -run variance in Linpack, but, like, it's, the CPU doesn't actually pull 275 watts. Like, I, I could have done this graph all the way out to 1,000 watts, and all that would happen is we would just have the scores go up and down due to the, like, variability of the benchmarks themselves, while the power consumption would stay the same. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so... You know, depending on, I guess, how much you value the multi-threaded performance of your of your 7950X versus your electricity costs or heating or, like, heat output or noise or whatever. Because, like, the, the thing is, if you reduce the power limit, you can use less cooling, potentially. Right? You can use a cheaper cooling system, and that's that's a potential benefit. Or a quieter cooling system, right? That's it's also a, an option. Um, and so the thing is... Like yeah, you you can you can make your own conclusion about that. I I don't really know what to say because like on one hand it is it's you know it is still picking up some amount of performance. It's not very much, but um like it, for gaming I think this would be stupid. Five percent more performance. Like <laughs> um you're like you're just not gonna notice that whatsoever. Um I mean it could stack with a few other performance improvements, right? Like memory settings and then you'd have an argument once, like, if you tune everything at the same time, you might in, in total add up to something that's somewhat noticeable, but yeah, a 5% five percent five percent on its own is just very negligible under most circumstances, but the thing is, this is a 16 core running Lin pack, this, this isn't, the, this performance scaling we're seeing here is not relevant to gaming whatsoever. Um, if you're wondering why, like, Cinebench and Geekbench 3 see worse scaling with the power limit than Linpack does, well, that's very simple. Uh, they pull less power. So they start out at a higher point on the voltage frequency curve, and there's just less room for improvement, right? So, and it's especially kind of noticeable down here, where, like, Linpack sees a almost one-to-one -one increase in performance with power limit, right? We go from 50 watts to 75 watts, which is a 50% increase in power limit. Linpack picks up 44% more performance, which is insane to me. Like, I am used to, you know, like, when you're overclocking, typical, like, performance to power behavior is, like, from 125 watts to 200 watts, right? Or 125 to, like, 225, where it's, like, you basically double your power consumption and your performance changes by, like, 30, 20%. Um... Actually, let's let's do a simple one. Let's go from 100 percent, 100 watts to 200 watts, right? Like there are, there are 100 watt CPUs out there. Um, there used to be a lot of Intel 100 watt CPUs out there, and doubling their power consumption for a pretty decent increase in performance wasn't that rare. 
So you'd go to like 206% divide by 168. And yeah, so you'd get like a 22% increase in performance for a doubling in power consumption. And that was, you know, that, that's pretty, that, that's basically in line with my expectations for like performance gains from overclocking. Um, seeing a 44% increase in performance from a 50% increase in power consumption is insane. Like I've never seen that. Um, probably because when you're overclocking, you're not in like super low voltage ranges. So you're pretty far up the voltage frequency curve and like you're, you know, you're hitting the point of, uh, where, well, generally speaking, if you want like a 10% increase in frequency, it's going to need at least a 10% increase in voltage and a 10% increase in voltage leads to a 10% increase in current draw. And those three things combined, basically, like, your 10% increase in frequency alone will probably increase your power consumption by, like, 9%. Your 10% increase in voltage will generally increase your power consumption by 20%. And so you add those two things up and you end up with, like, a 30% increase in power consumption for a 10% increase in uh, frequency, which means you get, like, 10% more performance at best with a 30% increase in power consumption. That's sort of what I generally expect when, when overclocking. So this massive performance jump, to me, that kind of looks like the operating voltage of the CPU didn't change at all. I wasn't really paying attention to that until I graphed it. And I was like, like, like I went through this testing kind of brainlessly. I like, I did the testing and then it's like, oh, the data is really interesting. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like, so looking at this massive jump in performance with like a minute, like, a 50% increase in power draw, like, the CPU must be running at basically the same voltage, and the only thing that changed is the frequency. Like, the chip must be running at, like, probably less than 1 volt, because actually Linpack at 200 watts runs at, like, 1.1-ish volts, 1.15-ish. So, yeah, this, this right here, this could be at, like, 0.7 volts or something. It could be really, really low voltage. Um... And instead of, like, the voltage and frequency going up, it's just the frequency going up. Because um, there is a lower limit to how low you can set the voltage before your CPU stops functioning. Um, so this is probably approaching that point down here in on the graph. Um, so, yeah, that's really interesting. I might do more testing on that, like, messing around with Ryzen at, like, very, very low voltages. Because um, I've never seen that before. Like, that, that, that is insane to me that you can have, like, a 50% increase in power consumption and get a basically 50% increase in performance. That's, I've never seen that. Um, that's really cool. But, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, we don't see that in Cinebench and Geekbench 3 because, you know, at 50 watts, Geekbench 3 and Cinebench can already be running at much higher frequencies and much higher voltages than Linpack does. Whereas Linpack is so incredibly power hungry that it's just yeah it's running super super low voltage super low frequency down there and so a small like a uh, you know a minor like a like the same increase in power limit gives a huge benefit to linpack whereas it really doesn't do much for well it doesn't do as much for cinebench or geekbench 3 so yeah anyway um that's kind of it for for this video in my opinion because uh i don't know what else to say um I guess, yeah, if you're a efficiency-oriented individual, uh, the stock power limit from AMD is insane because um, it just doesn't scale, like, at all. <laughs> it's like 1% faster than 200 watts. Um, and so you might, you know, like, if you want to save on electricity or cooling or whatever... Um, you're not going to be saving time, right? Like, if you're slowing the CPU down, your whatever workload you're running is going to spend take more time. But basically, if you have time, but you don't have cooling or electricity or whatever, uh, you could turn down the CPU to, like, 125, 150, 175, and your performance barely changes um, compared to, you know, the over 200-watt power limits. Um, yeah, like, even at 125, the CPU is still very fast right um so yeah but turning it all the way down to under 100 watts is kind of stupid in my opinion because at that point the, the cpu gets really really slow um right like th that yeah well i mean it's still way more efficient but 
I don't like. I guess maybe if you were trying to have like a passive rendering system, you know, then it might make sense. And to be fair, even when when you're on these like super low power limits, you still have a lot of single threaded performance. So, yeah, I guess if you wanted like a fully passive rendering rig, um, you you could mess with like a hundred or fifty. Like the sub one hundred power sub one hundred watt power limits, but otherwise, I, I think the 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 sensible range, if you're going to be turning your seven nine fifty X down for some reason, is like one twenty five to one seventy five. Above that, it doesn't really seem to scale, um, and below that, you I I think you're kind of giving up too much performance. So anyway, that's it for the video. Hopefully, this is somewhat helpful or at least interesting, because. Um, uh, yeah, there. That's that's kind of that. Uh, so I guess thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, uh, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. There's a link to that down in the description below as well. And I also have a Bandcamp. There's a link to that in the description uh, too. So... Yeah, anyway, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.